What's up, guys? We are back with the top 10. We got Maestro. We have Maestro gameplay. I forget to say that sometimes in these videos. But number three on our list, we're getting down on the wire for the top 10 players of 2016. Probably controversial pick. I'm not going to lie. Like, I think a lot of people might have not seen Maestro here when I first started it. But I have Maestro coming in at number three. Now, there's a lot of things to consider uh, between, like, I would say Remco, Greasy, and Maestro. It's like, you can kind of take any of these three and say that they did better here or there. Greasy obviously got the world champion title with Flipside. But I felt like, to an extent, like, obviously not as much as some of these other players. He was more of a third wheel on that team. That's not to take anything away from him. It's very hard to not be a third wheel when you're playing with uh, Marky and Cooks. Maybe no one could possibly do it. Uh, but I just wanted to point out how good of a land player Maestro is. He's basically the best land player. Look, if you just look at stats for the offensive side of the ball, he performed exceptionally well in both lands, which is a main reason for Northern Gaming's uh, success. And I thought, honestly, during the RLCS Season 2, that without Maestro, Northern Gaming might not have even come close to uh, how they performed throughout Season number 2. Uh, so that's why I gave the spot to Maestro over Greasy. And I believe I said this in the last video, where it was between Greasy and Maestro, that I actually had Greasy at number three for a while, but I thought I wanted to celebrate uh, Maestro's LAN uh, success, plus his abilities a little bit more, and then uh, so it wouldn't be as, uh, uh, as uh, I don't know, like, like having top three be all from flip side, the world champs. Sure, like, I wanted it to be heavy on results, but also based on skill, too. And I thought Maestro has performed exceptionally well throughout the entire year. So I wanted to get, show him some love. Uh, so, yeah, that's my reason there. Let's go over his accomplishments in 2016. If uh, you haven't been watching all along, started out on Super Sonic Avengers with Greasy Meister. They played in the Gfinity Invitational. They got second place. We talked about this a lot before. 12 and 10 record. Uh, they beat Spectral, Crown of Jewels, which was the big win, and MyXMG. MyXMG was also one of those teams trying to fight for that top four spot in Europe. And uh, uh, Super Sonic Avengers had a really good tournament there. But then they lost to Flipside 5-0 in the finals when Flipside made their run through the lower bracket. And then on the other side, the Pro League came in fifth place. They finished 17 and 19, a 15 and 15 regular season, which only got them the fourth seed in Europe, which is pretty much the important factor there. They had to face a really tough Kings of Urban squad at the time, and they wound up losing 4-2 in the quarterfinals. They did beat Flipside, though, SK and Spectral. It's just really weird to see them beat Flipside, but only two other teams throughout the regular season. They were very uh, inconsistent uh, throughout that, and that might have been one of the main reasons why that... Um, Maestro and Greasy started looking uh, elsewhere, and they teamed up with Remco moving forward right after this Pro League, which obviously was a really smart idea. They were flirting around with it a lot in other tournaments uh, at the time and seeing a lot of success uh, with the Weedem Girls squad, and then they decided to uh, make it legit and make it their official team. Moving on to April through June... They were, like, as soon as they created that team, they were the team to beat for a really long time. They played an 8 of 9 uh, Rocket Royales and came in twice. I mean, uh, sorry, came in first, second, and third all two times. Uh, I believe Maestro, he... So, Weedem Girls actually participated in all nine, but Maestro was not around for one of them. So, he only participated in 8 of 9. Six out of eight podiums is really impressive. Again, we'll talk about the Rocket Royale International which is a lot different from the regional because only the top two teams from your region make it into the top four. So uh, you have to finish top two in the hardest region there is and then still play pretty well. Uh, so they were dominating the Rocket Royals, a Royale scene throughout the summer. A lot of people thought that they were going to be the best team going into even the LAN, and they were. They, they were considered the favorites there. Uh, after Qualifier 1, they got a second place. 26-9 regular season, though, the, uh, you're a number one seed. But again, when it matters, flip side tends to beat them, and they beat them again 4-2 to two in the finals. Uh, but the big thing was Northern Game and flip side, or I'm sorry, Weedham Girls at this moment, were just so dominant. They both 4 0 uh, in the semifinals, and everyone knew if someone's going to win this championship for the LAN, it's probably going to be one of these two. Little did we know that Cosmic would pull out a dream run, a dream two-day run, and uh, and change that all up. But Maestro has been a huge component during the RLCS 
season number one. He was number two in goals per game, but best in Europe. He was only behind one of the North American players. Uh, I don't remember who it was, actually. It might have been Garrett. And uh, he was also number two in shots. He's been an offensive powerhouse for Northern Gaming, where we think, like, for the most part, like, uh, Remco is that rock that sits in back usually, and then I feel like Maestro is this that offensive spark th that they need at times to uh, really perform well on the offensive side of things. Uh, plus, at the Season 1 land, he uh, also finished, which we'll get into now. We'll go into uh, quarter number three here. Uh, we'll go into what they did first. Uh, they finished first in qualifier number two. That was the one where Flipside lost to Super Saiyan Avengers. And then we uh, Northern Gaming now, uh, this is when they got picked up, which we were all happy to see a big org uh, coming in, uh, picking up one of the best teams. It was definitely a nice moment there. Uh, but they got first seed going into the LAN. The favorites to win the LAN, but people were not counting out flip side, that's for sure. A lot of people had one of those team, uh, two teams winning. No one had Cosmic winning, though. Uh, they finished in third. Uh, the Northern Gaming Day 2 curse is real. They beat Genesis and Exodus on day one pretty handily. I think it was a 6-0. Um, and then they lost to IBP and Flipside on day number two. And before we continue, let's get into the second replay. His car vanished. I don't know what happened to it. A little, little strange there. Uh, I think it's this one. Make sure that's right. Here we go. Sorry for spoilers on the bottom there. But yeah, they lost to I Buy Power Cosmic. And then... Like, I don't know if it's Tilt. I'm not sure what it is from Northern Gaming. But after they lose at a big event, they haven't been able to bounce back in the lower bracket at all. Uh, to be fair, they always face the best team coming out of the lower bracket. Because they make it so far. They make it always to the winner bracket final. They need to find a way to beat the teams coming out of the lower bracket. That have <gasps> uh, excuse me, uh, confidence uh, after some wins. Now I'm about to get the hiccups, which is going to suck for this video, but we'll try and power through. But again, Maestro, Season 1 land, number 2 in goals. The only person he uh, finished behind was Kronovi, and again, number 2 in shots. He's always near the top of the lens. He is the most prolific scorer at land, uh, with the best average that has appeared, at least in both lands. Because Crow technically is higher, but Crow also was not in Season number 2. So, I'm not counting that. But Maestro, again, their main offensive threat. He shows up in the big situations. Like, I felt like maybe during the first half of the year, maybe Remco was probably the better player on the team. And, but then, like, once like RLCS rolled around, like the really big tournaments, Maestro really started to make a name for himself. Had some incredible goals, and he's just... He's been so good offensively that teams are very, very scared when they see Maestro going in the air for a shot. And uh, honestly, you can't go wrong with Maestro, Remco, or Greasy, like as I said before. But I decided to uh, go with Maestro. There's arguments for all of them. But again, they participated in six of seven Rocket Royales during the regional time. They finished first four times, so again, dominating the Rocket Royales. And second one, so five of six podiums. And this was not even with Greasy uh, either. They only participated, I think, in two with Greasy. And then Greasy left for Flipside, and they were still dominant as they were trying to find new teammates. The one they didn't podium was actually when Pashi joined Northern Gaming. They won the first Rock Royale. Then they like officially announced him as part of the roster. Then the next Rock Royale, they did pretty terrible and decided to kick Pashi, or at least separate uh, and that's when they went with uh, Mystic, who was actually an old teammate of Remco's on Spectral. So they decided to go with him. And honestly, like, that's another big reason I think I wanted to put Maestro here. Because uh, as we go into Season number 2, uh, like, I felt like Mystic was not going to be the greatest player for Northern Gaming coming in. Like, I thought this might actually put a bigger gap between them and Flipside. And in a way it did, but... Like, I thought Northern Gaming might fall back down to the crowd, which they really didn't. Uh, like, I thought Maestro played extremely well with Mystic. And Mystic, I thought, at the start of the season at least, he kind of suffered a bit. It was kind of just the Remco Maestro show for most of the season. And then Mystic slowly started getting into it by playoffs and by land time. Uh, but for the most part of the season, it was Maestro and Remco who had to carry a ton uh, to finish where they did. And, like, that's another big reason why Remco and Maestro are so high. It's just 
the amount of carry they had to do, like, it was kind of their game plan. They were kind of having Mystic sit back and, like, let just Remco and Maestro do Remco and Maestro things, but Maestro really performed exceptionally well. Uh, once again, throughout the season, number two in goals, number three in shots. Northern Gaiman, they're all about pressure. They always have been about pressure, and they didn't really lose that when they added Mystic. Even though Mystic was not getting a lot of those stats, it was mostly still Remco and Maestro, but they uh, carried the load and, and uh, did exceptionally well. They finished a second in the Europe region, uh, defeating Makedes' 4-3 in the semis, and then they lost again to Flipside 4-0. Like, they just could not find a way to be flipside at all this season. Finishing 11-1. Then they go to LAN as the number two seed. They again get to play Genesis, get the 3-0. Then they face a Precision Z squad. Again, it might have been a pretty easy bracket for them, but... Because they know that they can beat PZ, but again, like, in a LAN setting, you just never know what's going to happen. We saw a ton of upsets. But Northern Game in general didn't get upset until day number two at least. But day number one, they always uh, performed exceptionally well. And that was an incredible shot there by Maestro. Uh, and Maestro, again, huge part of that. Uh, the Season two land, number two in goals, number two in shots. Finished just behind Garrett, actually, at this one. So he's always been the top European scorer at both lands. But on average, he is the best goal scorer there is at a land. And that's really impressive when you also are not winning every single game. They finished 2-2 two and two in both these lands, so they're not winning a ton more than they're losing, but Maestro is still putting up numbers. Like Even when they lose, I always I feel like Maestro has a lot of highlight plays like in their series and is keeping them alive, uh, but they just can't cut it just yet. I hope it's not a tilt factor Like uh, after losing the first one. It could be partially like a practice factor because once... You're in the winner bracket final. There's no teams left to practice once you lose that game. There's no one left to really uh, practice against because the other two teams are just about to play. Like Flipside pay, uh, played Take 3, and that's basically their practice to go into the Northern uh, Gaming series while Northern Gaming doesn't really have any teams left to practice with unless they practice against Mocket Aces, which I'm not sure if they would want to do because they might have to play them later. So it could be partially that, but it... Uh, or tilt, or it's just the better team shows up. Like, Flipside showed up uh, in both lands, obviously, when they played them. And, yeah, once again, they defeated Genesis 3-0, PZ 3-1. They lost to Mocket Aces, an incredible seven-game series, 4-3. And then Flipside, 4-1. They were one game away from being at least a second at this land. It was an extremely close series. Maestro, again, uh, performed exceptionally well. And he's been doing that time and time again throughout pretty much... All of their leagues, he's been uh, like Northern Gaming's best stat man across the board. And um, the only thing he doesn't really do as much is get as many assists. He's more on the offensive side for sure. Uh, but he does it better than anyone else does in a LAN environment. And that is why he is number three on the top ten players. And look out, guys. Like, I made the Remco video before Devo got announced. But now you add Devo to Maestro and Remco. 2017 is going to be a good year for Northern Gaming, guys. Let's just put it that way. I hope they can uh, f figure out how to work with him well because I feel like it is a different role swap from what they had with Mystic. So I think Remco might have to play a little bit more back and we might start seeing the Devo Maestro show. It'll probably also cut into Maestro stats a bit, but we'll see. Maybe uh, like instead of goals, he's getting a lot more assists as well. So we'll see where it goes from here. But that team is going to be incredible to watch. I think it could be uh, in the running for the best team. They might be able to finally... Uh, break over that uh, that flip side hump and start taking some series versus them. So I'm really excited to see them in RCS season number three. And honestly, they're going to be a fan favorite for sure because that is going to be a one good looking squad. And once again, we have Maestro, the second best looking man. Let's let's look at that face. The second best looking man in our top ten. Sorry, Remco is cuter. That's up for debate, but what's not up... Well, actually, him being number three is also up for debate, but here's where I put him. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Number three, Maestro. You'll see the next two videos next week. You can probably expect to see who those two are, but you never know. Uh, thanks so much for watching, guys. Thanks for all the support with these videos. I love seeing what people are thinking, who's coming next. Keep it coming. I like the joke ones, too. And, uh, yeah. I'll see you next time, guys. Later.